you can remember the complications of a myocardial infarction using the mnemonic Darth Vader. Often, it can be tricky to remember how soon post-MI these complications can happen, so I've included those as well. Starting things off, we have D for death. Of course, death can be an outcome of a myocardial infarction, but remember that it can happen due to complications too. A is to remind you of arrhythmias that can happen due to the change in substrate due to the ischemia and the necrosis, as well as the autonomic dysfunction that is often seen. Arrhythmias can happen any time post-MI, but are particularly frequent early on. 25% of patients who will have an arrhythmia will have them in the first 24 hours. Ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation cause the most deaths in the acute phase. R reminds us of ruptures that can occur in the ventricular wall, the ventricular septum, and in the papillary muscles. Rupture of the papillary muscle is the most common mechanical complication post-MI. These occur roughly three to five days post-MI. Next, we have T for tamponade, and a cardiac tamponade in the post-MI setting is frequently associated to a ventricular wall rupture. So the timing of a tamponade often coincides with a rupture, so three to five days post-infarction. H is for heart failure. Both acute and chronic forms are potential complications after a myocardial infarction. Acutely, if the heart cannot pump blood due to the infarct, then fluid will quickly build up in the lungs and lead to pulmonary edema. Of course, the same can happen in chronic heart failure, but this is generally over a longer period of time. V is for valvular disease. We touched on papillary muscle ruptures that can lead to acute mitral regurgitation, but you can also end up with ventricular septal defects due to septum ruptures. Our second A is for aneurysm, usually of the left ventricle. Up to 15% of patients post-MI will develop one. Some can develop very quickly within five days. D is for Dresler's syndrome, a type of pericarditis that happens two to three weeks after the infarct, believed to be due to an autoimmune reaction to the damaged tissue. It can, however, present several months after the infarction. Next, we have E for embolism. Usually, it's a left ventricular mural thrombus, meaning that it is on the wall of the left ventricle. This can lead to stroke, and thrombi usually form within the first two weeks post myocardial infarction. Finally, we have R for recurrence, because often these patients have other risk factors that initially contributed to the original MI, and so they may be at risk of another. Markers include diabetes, EGFR, and age. R also reminds you of the regurgitation that may be seen with the rupture of the papillary muscle. 